Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I've got a cast for you today. Finally getting two out in one week and hopefully back on schedule. <laughs> um, the power supply that went out on me last week that prevented me from doing my normal cast has been replaced. So hopefully everything will be all hunky-dory and I can get a bunch of epic games out to you guys over the next few days. This is going to be a one versus one on Via 3 Protectorate, but before I get into that, I've got a quick announcement to make. There is a new tournament running. I know a lot of you have heard of the WWPC tournament that runs basically continuously, has cash prizes and championships every couple of weeks or so to determine the new owner of the cash prize and the avatar. Well, there is now a two versus two division of the WWPC tournament and pretty much anyone can join up. There's a bunch of different brackets. You should totally check out the link in the forum uh, or the link to the forum that I put in the description below. Just click on that and you can read up on all the information that you need and participate in that tournament. It is a cool place to be and a fun thing to do. You should grab a friend, practice up, and get in on that action. Without further ado, let's go ahead and look at this game. We've got Stefan D taking Seraphim on the northern side of this map, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen this map before. I've casted it once, and it does have a ton of reclaim on it, and it is fairly large. It is a 10k map, nice expansions out to both sides, a little bit of channeling of the action here. We've got uh, divide right here with a gap in between where a lot of units come through. Room to raid on the outside edges. And you definitely need to exercise good map control practices to lock this thing down. So we've got first land and second air for Stefan D. And it looks like the same thing on the bottom for TA for life. He is going Cybern, he's got first land, a couple extra power generators as compared to Stefan D, and he is going second air. Now, honestly, this map is one where a early bomber or even a first bomber would make a huge difference because these expansions are critical to the gameplay. You've got four mass extractors and typically there will be factories built in those expansions to get your main build power online to get units to the front. Because when you have a lot of build power on hand you can easily push units into these side corridors here and do damage control very effectively. And You can see here we've got an engineer already getting in here to build a land factory. A early bomber or even a first bomber, if you're brave, will be able to snag these expanding engineers coming out of the three points here. One mid, and then one to the side, and one to this side. And that can be incredibly damaging to the person on the receiving end of that bombing, probably more so than in any of the first bombers in most 5k maps. Um, it just slows down your progression horrendously. You can see both players here actually prepared for early bombers. Uh, we did not have any bombers, but we do have three interceptors building up here, and then we have a scout and two interceptors down here. So both of these guys were preparing for the bomber that they thought would be coming. Looks like TA for Life is going to get out a Mantis Scout pair. We've got a Selen parked happily right here which is going to be invisible, I would imagine. The Selen, of course, does have the cloaking ability, so if it stays stationary for four seconds or longer, and you put it on hold fire, ah, this one was not on hold fire, it began firing back and lost the cloak. Um, that scout can pretty much sit there indefinitely until either Omni comes over the top of it, or something just happens to hit it. Uh, you know, ground fire, collision, or something. Um, it will remain there and provide free intel. One of the hilarious things that you can do with this scout is if you park it on top of a mass extractor it will prevent an engineer from building a mass extractor there and you can get some really good laughs out of that. The only way to fix that is to manually reclaim exactly on top of the selen and it will get rid of the scout but just a really funny situation to be in. Something that you can do to people just to troll them. Build mass selens and put them on every single mass extractor that uh, you can get your hands on. That would be very humorous. I, I would watch a cast of that. That would be pretty, pretty hysterical. Okay, we've got ACU out to the left here, and we do have our main build power going down. Uh, well, not main. We do have five land factories over here that are streaming units down to the southern side. Then we've got four additional factories coming online on the top here. 
And then looks like TA for life is building three land factories in base. He is getting his expansion slowly with single engineers, but not building outlying land factories. And then we have one land factory out front here. And that uh, lack of build power is going to come back to bite him, I think, shortly because red is pouring a whole bunch of units onto the map and that is not something that you want to fall behind on you do not want to be behind in t1 spam at this phase of the game when you're trying to expand and cut off the other players expansion Stefan D at the moment is slightly behind TA for life and mass income but I think this is gonna fix that problem we've got a Zooey and a couple of tanks coming in to try to kill one of these mass extractors or two or three or however many they can get their hands on TA is pulling 45 mass per tick, Stefan D pulling 33, or 28 rather. It is reclaim bumps here and there. One thing that I am actually surprised to see is the fact that these guys have built their land factories this far in the back, and TA actually did just complete his tech 2 upgrade, and he's going to start building rhinos and not a tech 2 grade upgrade as of yet on the northern side when you have your HQ in the back that is not so big of a deal but you don't want to have all of your build power in the back like this we've got six land factories online back here and that means that it takes a very long time for your units to reach the front and that can end badly if your situation depends on a certain amount of units and the biggest example of that that I can think of is flak uh, you can't get flak to the front very quickly if you need a specific unit to deal with a situation you're either going to have to wait till it walks to the front or transport it and that can be a huge hassle sometimes this is a very successful little raid here. It wiped out all four of these mass extractors over here, killed off the engineer that was building that land factory, and then was able to kill several engineers over here. So nicely done on that one, and then we have a, a group of tanks moving south this way. But they are going to run into three rhinos, and I think those will clean them up quite nicely. Rhinos pack a ton of damage into a very small area. They are pricey Tech 2 tanks, more so than the Pillar for the UEF, um, but with the higher cost comes higher damage concentration and a little pack of Rhinos, it holds a lot more damage than you think it does. Um, it is easy to get swarmed by Rhinos because you underestimate the damage potential of that group and also when you concentrate a group of units into a tiny little area, the Rhinos have greater range than the Tech 1 spam does and they're able to reach out and hit a large number of tanks at a time while taking very few shots themselves. I don't know if that makes sense, me explaining it. Hopefully it does you can get what I'm talking about, but uh, it is a very critical aspect of the Tech 2 units as opposed to Tech 1 units, but you have to get the critical mass up. If you only have one or two, it doesn't work for you, but when you have a group of them, Tech 2, because of the concentration of damage, will absolutely obliterate large numbers of Tech 1. And we do have some Tech 1 tanks over here trying to get into the base, but TA is steadily streaming out Rhinos now. He's assisting this factory and getting them out as quickly as he can, and he will be able to deal with that threat. Gunships are also helping him out with some harassment, and it looks like he does have the ability to gain complete air control, but he is going to choose to let those gunships die for some unknown reason. Nope, there he goes. He's going to chase it down, and now too late oh well um i do see some ilshivas coming down stefan is definitely getting his tech 2 build power online much more so than ta for life and uh the problem though is that as you can see it is taking forever for these units to reach the front line there are as of yet zero ilshivas in the front Actually, uh, there's two over to the left here, but those are about to run into six rhinos, and that will not end well for them. Ilshivas compared to the rhinos are slower, with longer range, higher damage, but also higher cost, 
and a good amount of health. Ilshavas are the king of Tech 2 units, undisputably. Um, the Seraphims do have the powerhouse Tech 2, but they have the weaker Tech 3. So I think what we're going to see in this game here is just the sheer amount of Ilshavas flowing onto the field at the moment is kind of scary. I think Stefan D is going to be able to push TA far, far back. The question is, can TA get a successful T3 upgrade online and get the bricks out? Because once you get a concentrated number of either bricks or percivals, that is about the only thing that can overwhelm the Ilshiva spam, and then Seraphim Tech 3 can't compete with Cybern and UEF Tech 3. But what we're seeing right now is an eco advantage. Stefan D is basically sitting on 75% map control. And I do realize that there are blue units covering almost half the map. But if you look at the utilized expansion points, we've got the base counting as one, and then we have a full expansion belonging to red, although maybe not for too much longer. And then this was just recently killed. Red did own this one until just a moment ago. And he is going to get the reclaim from that, I think. He's got three engineers still alive. The Ilshavas are going to come in and kill off those rhinos. Interceptors coming in, and they will kill that gunship. Yes, so that's going to leave the engineers alive, and Red is going to be able to reclaim that. And then we have a large group of Ilshavas moving southward once again, and there are no units here to deny it. Mobile Flak is a wonderful thing. Killing off two gunships here, protecting all of these troops. He needs to keep that Flak alive for sure to have any chance of intruding into TA's base. TA is getting forced back into a corner here, and I do not like the looks of this. Stefan D is pulling 135 mass and sitting on 34,000 reclaim because he is advancing and reclaiming as he advances. TA is only pulling 93 mass and only has 24,000 reclaim. So this is going to get a little bit hairy for TA, I think. He does have T3 online, building bricks, but he has a group of Ilshavas that is rapidly approaching his base. I think he's going to lose this mass extractor and possibly get pushed back some. This is not looking good for him at all. TA does have 5.5k power income. That probably means that he has RAS. Yes, he does. And he does... Well, he is building hives. I imagine this means that he will eventually be going Tech 3 Air. Of course, everyone eventually goes Tech 3 Air, but I mean, he will be going Tech 3 Air with a very huge amount of build power attached to that factory. The Elshabas are going to come in and tear up these T2 power generators, but honestly, at this point in time, it doesn't even matter because regardless, TA is going to get the reclaim. He would have been control k and reclaiming those anyway because he does have RAS on his ACU. So... Being realistic, Stefan D is actually helping TA out right now because TA did not wish to protect those power generators and Stefan D is focus firing the power generators, therefore not doing any damage to the other portions of TA's base. That was basically a best case scenario for TA. And also this means that he will have all of the reclaim in his own base to suck up at will and turn into more units to go a firing at Stefan D. There is a T3 mobile anti-air that's going to start knocking interceptors out of the sky. As you probably noticed, TA did lose air control. We do have some more Ilshavas and Zooies moving up mid here. Another group to the north. Going to have a Rhino task force moving in. I would hope that those can kill this expansion. Maybe it will get it done. That would do great things for TA's cause because he is still 25 or so behind on mass income. He really needs to make up that gap and I think he's actually about to lose some ground in that respect. He's about to lose these two Tech 2 mass extractors with caps. Lots of Tech 1 air factories coming online. We've got four of them in a row up here and they're all producing Tech 1 bombers. 
That's going to be very handy for killing build power. I would assume that those are all going to be targeted at these engineers. Although they may be used for damage control on units as well. I do not know. T3 on the field for the Seraphim. Stefan is pushing tanks. Those are going to be quickly outclassed by the amount of bricks that are on the field. We have five built so far that are in operation and that number will only go up. And once you build up a critical mass of bricks, basically Othams can't touch it. It is hilarious how badly they lose due to their lack of range and slow speed. Kites, bricks can kite very effectively on that. Otham's successfully evading those rhinos. Lots of Corsairs being built. That's an interesting choice from TA for life. They do very well at damaging units. I think that was probably a choice made based on the fact that there was some mobile flak in there. Corsairs will fare better against flak covered units than gunships will because they can release all their damage in an alpha strike are a much higher alpha strike than a gunship can and be able to snipe off the flak in the cluster and then come back around and actually attack the units that you want to get rid of. Tech 1 bombers coming in, those are going to lay down a little bit of fire in here, not really going to accomplish a whole lot and then these Ilshavas and tanks are going to move in. Not extremely good coordination from Stefan D, letting those two groups come in separately and then retreating, allowing the bricks to give chase with their superior range and do some additional damage. That force possibly could have had a better chance if it had all t attacked at once, but honestly I think with the four bricks there it was probably doomed to begin with so it doesn't really matter. We got one brick running away from two Othams here. Tech 1 Bombers moving around the back side, but those are going to fail to hit much of anything, I think. They haven't decided on a target. They're just kind of looping around. Here comes the... Oh, that is actually a SAM. That's a stationary SAM. Good deal. TA for Life getting a SAM up in anticipation of a Strap Bomber, which I'm sure will be coming along at any time now, considering the fact that TA does not have T3 air, and his opponent does. Well, the air is paused, probably because, yes, RAS upgrade started. He is getting ready to do resource allocation, which has a huge, huge, huge power drain. Got a T2 transport right here, loaded with two Othams. That is probably going to try to drop in the back of the base here. We'll have to see how successful it is. And one thing that I do notice is sniper bots are now getting into the mix for Stefan. It's the first time I've seen them firing, although they may have for just a minute already. Those are going to be able to outrange the bricks quite handily and be able to lay down some damage from the back. And that transport may actually get off its drop. It is. Yes. Whoa, that was close. Thankfully, Corsairs have pitiful air damage. Those Othams are going to sit there, take an overcharge to the face. And a second overcharge before the Corsair can even come in for its full firing cycle, and the Othams are dead. I would love to think that Stefan might have done some damage if he had actually been paying attention to that, instead of just dropping it off and letting them die to overcharge. Let's see, Stefan is T2 on his ACU with ARAS completed, and he does have a substantial amount of power in the rear here. That's going to allow him to get a strap bomber out. As anticipated, there it is. And he is reclaiming, no, not reclaiming, building engineers, but I'm sure he'll be reclaiming in a moment down here. Now, this looks a little dangerous. We have a very large group of Othams moving in. Those, while terribly slow and with horrible range, when you have enough of them like that, they do a lot of damage. The Othams are actually the highest damage per mass of the T3 main assault units, but here you can see the terrain really screwing them over. This lip in the hill right here forced the units to spread out some and trickle into the face of those bricks, and that allowed the bricks to pick them off relatively easily one by one. I think 
two bricks down for TA. Three bricks down, and he's killed off uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten ish. Ten or eleven Othams. So very nicely done on his part. Extremely good. Now, keep bear in mind that the Othams are also cheaper than the bricks, so the mass to mass comparison wasn't as bad as that numbers comparison looked. But throw the Ilshivas into the mix there, and uh, Stefan definitely lost substantially more mass than TA for Life did in units, and this is going to make a nice little mass present for TA. Speaking of mass presence, we need to check in with the reclaim number. 65 for TA and 57 for Stefan D. I keep hoping that TA will be able to start re-expanding, and he's tried several times, but he keeps getting forced back into this corner because Stefan D is pulling 239 to 152. Reclaim numbers are bouncing around a little bit here. Essentially, Stefan D has a 100 mass per tick income advantage over TA for life. The only thing that is keeping TA for life alive right now is very good placement and micro of units and the superiority of the bricks over the Othams. And Stefan D is making incredible progress despite the awfulness of the Otham because he has such a huge production advantage. You can see all of these T3 factories he's got online just streaming in tanks 8 and 9 and 10 at a time. So very nice production that he has up there. TA is building T3 units off of three factories, one of them assisted. And he is throwing a lot of eco down on T3 air. Stefan D has been producing T3 air for a while now. And in just the last couple minutes, TA for Life has done a pretty good job of catching up to the numbers of ASF that Stefan has. He hasn't completely caught up, mind you, but he is getting there. And once again, the map is completely red. The task force in the center here did get wiped out. There are now Othams in the mid. And we do have a nice little group of five or so bricks to the left. I think it would have been worthwhile to send one brick on a suicide mission to kill all of this stuff. If we could have killed the engineer and the factory, that would have prevented easy reclaim for Stefan. He does have another land factory over here, but it would take time to get the engineers around. And he would kill off two mass extractor points. Basically be a thorn in the side of Stefan D. But I do understand his reasoning for backing up, considering the large swarm of units here. Now, there is a critical mass of bricks. And when I say critical mass, I mean that we have a nice clump that has a huge amount of damage packed into a small area versus a large, spread-out, short-range force. And that is absolutely what the brick excels at. The only thing that I could hope for more would be if there was mobile stealth in here. TA for Life is really missing out on that bonus. Let's see if we got Omni. We do have Omni. It is right there. Yes, yeah, stealth would be highly effective. He could strike from the max range of the brick and wipe out several Othams or other units from the incoming force before the Othams were even o able to open fire. Stealth does wonderful things for you. It is much more circumstance dependent than shields are but they do kind of the same job as a shield because it helps negate damage to your total attack force and I would argue that they actually have a lot more strengths because it would allow you to run all the way around the outside edge if you put some units under stealth you could get all the way around up to here and be almost in the build power of Stefan's base before, actually you could be in the build power before you came in Omni range. So that would be a very nice strike to just skip all of this crap here. Uh, don't worry about the Tech 1 mexes. Feed your units all the way through and loop them around into this base. Kill off all those Tech 2 mexes and the factory over there. And then leave the way you came. Very nice little thing that could happen. You got three bricks defending against all these tanks. I want to scream, this is Sparta, but I don't think my neighbors upstairs would appreciate that too much. <laughs> uh, I cannot wait until I move out of here. When I get married in a couple of months, I will be moving to an actual house that I will be renting. And I will be able to do pretty much anything I please because I won't have any nearby neighbors to worry about. 
and that will be wonderful because I've spent the last several years in an apartment and it has gotten old I can tell you alrighty then we've got the what I would imagine to be the T3 upgrade going down on Stefan's com I pretty positive it's T3 and yet another incursion into TA's base this front expansion here has been destroyed so many times I've lost count there are some bricks there, which I think would definitely overwhelm the Otham Force. Yes, they would, especially considering there was some more in the back coming up here. And uh, he is going to move northwards, and then we have a larger group here that is going to wipe out all of this mess and start moving south once it joins with this group. And that could actually be a bat. What have we here? This is a nuke. That is a worthy aside. I'm going to get distracted from the T3 for a second. And there's a strap bomber down there, bearing down on those bricks. That is not very nice. Those bricks are going to go down before they do much damage at all. Um, nuke launcher. This could be amazing as long as TA can keep it alive. There's a large amount of tanks coming in, and, well, they're kind of getting messed up by the terrain. So not too terribly much going on there and build power being lost on the southern side. I really wish Stefan D would take a little bit more care with his units. This is slightly frustrating to see. There's been several opportunities that were missed badly just by a little bit of a faltering in unit control. And I'm not saying that I would do better if I was in this situation, but you've seen pretty much consistently through this game, I mean, everybody makes a couple of missteps, but TA, for the most part, ooh, ASF engagement, and there's the nuke! It did get off before these units came in. TA for life directly engaging the Othams, trying... Ooh, his health is not looking good. That is going to be shooting right towards the back. Not good. Not good at all. Start throwing down shields here, and bricks coming in to deal with the Othams. That nuke is going to impact... And bye-bye base, Stefan D's pretty much his entire power grid went down with that one. All of the T3 and T2 gens with a huge amount of build power and a couple mass extractors. That was a brilliant nuke on the part of TA. Nicely done. That is going to also end T3 land production. That was the HQ and all support factories. That was a terrible hit up there for Stefan D. He still has a lot of Othams on the field, but if TA can defend himself for just a little while and hopefully get rid of that Strat Bomber, Strat Bomber is going to take Sam fire there and the single ASF tailing in is going to take it out for the kill. Um, if TA can keep this nuke alive, it is loaded half again already and Stefan D does not even have a nuke defense built yet, I don't think. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he will get a second nuke off, and he can use all of the reclaim to build this monkey lord that he's chosen to build. He may actually get back out on the field now. This is the entirety of the attack force that Stefan D has left right here in the mid, and I think one very nicely controlled monkey lord with this group of bricks will be more than enough to take out all of these T3 units. Stefan D somehow still has... 391 mass income that is sky high almost three times as much as TA for life with his paltry 121 but TA is about to take a massive lead in reclaim because of all these T3 units down here he is sitting on 110,000 versus 83,000 and it is only going to go up He's about to get this Monkey Lord built, and he will be able to take out everything in his base and hopefully begin to start advancing on Stefan D finally and maybe hold some ground. Um, what I was saying earlier is that TA for Life, on a consistent basis, has controlled his units well. He has clumped them up properly. He has kited where he should have kited and progressed where he should have progressed and for the most part has done pretty well for himself. He's got the normal amount of small mistakes. Everybody has them, but he's been very consistent. Here we see a Monkey Lord casually raking across the front of these Othams as they come in range. You've got to clump your T3 if you're going to attack a T4. If you let them get a little bit spread out or come in caddy corner and don't engage at the same time, 
that's gonna end exactly like that just ended there's the second nuke I have to see where that heads in just a second Stefan on the other hand has had a little bit of an issue controlling his units he's let them get spread out hasn't been paying attention to terrain exactly and it's hurt him quite badly this game and that was I don't know that that was a very good nuke that was four T3 mass extractors and a little bit of build power there was no nuke defense loaded up here and I'm sure TA would have known that I'm sure he was scouting there's scouts now as we speak he could have killed Stefan D with that nuke I think quite easily perhaps the ACU could have run from it but there is a whole lot more infrastructure over here than there was over here so nuke even if you miss the ACU the nuke would have been much better placed up there I, I would love to know why TA chose to do that I'm sure he has a reason but I have no idea what it is handful of ASF coming in those were trying to preemptively strike the strap bombers over there uh, that is one bad thing about a map like this where your SAMs don't have a ton of clearance out in front of the base you're gonna have to build SAMs out here to effectively defend against strap bombers strap bombers are on the move we're gonna have to see where they head to monkey lord moving northwards slowly and steadily I would think that would probably be where the strap bombers would go looks like Stefan has abandoned ASF production and he is strictly going a strap bomber production which is actually a pretty dang good idea he is very badly power slash mass stalled though and his nuke defense is not loaded TA is rapidly loading his nuke you can see he his reclaim is astronomical 150 versus 80 four basically so he is almost to the double reclaim mark even though in the early game he was faltering this is how you do when you start advancing once you start advancing and reclaiming behind your advance you start getting ahead and reclaim and you end up winning now we have a chicken online in the midst of a group of awesomes this is a fairly dangerous attack force as long as Stefan D keeps it together and exhibits some good control um, He's got to keep the tanks in with the G with the chicken. I almost said GC. Um, although versus well, that is a full health two vet monkey lord. I think these two T4s would probably mutually destruct if they met. Kind of a hard call, but it is not going to happen. There is nuke number three, and. Nuke defense is not going to load. Stefan D is still slightly mass stalled, did not get his income balanced in time. There's the nuke. That entire base goes bye bye, and he is down to. Oh, was his ACU in there? Yes, it was. Well, I'm sorry, folks. I did not see the ACU icon. There it is. That is game. We had a second Monkey Lord online down here that was about to move northward. TA bringing that back from the brink of destruction that was an absolutely amazing comeback he defended himself very well versus the t3 in the bottom here used that reclaim to keep himself in the game made the mass investment in the nuke which was kind of questionable considering his position on map control but he was able to build it balance his eco launch the sucker and then once the trickle of Othams ceased he was able to re-emerge onto the map and that is an ungodly amount of reclaim. 175,000 versus 84,000, all in the last 10 or 15 minutes of the game. So very nicely done to TA. Kudos to you and a lesson in why you do not give up in a one versus one game. Even if it looks bleak, even if you are literally fighting off units within your own base, if you can turn that into a reclaim field, you can stay in the game. Alrighty guys, that is going to wrap it up for this cast. Once again, do not forget to check out the WWPC 2 vs. 2 tournament. That is a tongue twister if I've ever heard one. I need to click that link in the bottom if you wish to participate. And uh, I, I know the 2 vs. 2 tournaments are a blast. You meet up with some great people, have some good games, and hey, there's an avatar waiting at the end if you can win your division. 
So, without any further babbling, I am going to bail out of this game. I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks always for watching.